Visually African. We are privileged to join in by um, uh, the Honourable Member um, Kobran Minta Akando, who is the uh, Member of Parliament for the um, Dabosu constituency and also doubles up to be the ranking member of the Health Committee in Parliament. You're most welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it's one of fortunate to call about us as, uh, you know, according to us, we can't greet, but uh, we'll take it like that. <laughs> but first of all, let's look at this. Um, Let's look at the uh, MPs project. Uh, we all understand that the MP, uh, member, as members of parliament, you are entitled to uh, 4.5 um, MPs common fund that obviously is being used for developmental projects and um, I mean, I mean stuff like that. First of all, let's 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 deal with the Gabuso constituency. What are some of the developmental projects that um, the MPs common fund, obviously representation of 4.5 percent, have been used for so far? Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, let's start by saying that the main responsibility of a member of parliament is to serve as a check on the executive and to go to parliament to make laws and um, to represent your people in parliament, to draw government's attention to certain needs of the people in the constituency. But as part of uh, our workings, we have access to certain funds i.e. the National Health Insurance Funds, the GET Fund, and then the Common Fund, which is not common anyway. <laughs> and, 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 and so these are the funds that we as members of parliament assess and we, I mean, we are entitled to. And so I always say that these are the very um, funds that if you're a member of parliament or you're aspiring to go to the House, you can firmly make promises based on. because you will be directly in charge of those funds. So you can make your promises based on that. Any other thing you are going to lobby, any other thing is based on the fact that your political party comes to power and you are going to lobby somebody. But as a member of parliament, these are the funds that you will be directly responsible of, you understand. And so um, I have used my share of those funds for... Um, a lot of developmental projects and we are in the rural constituencies we have a lot of uh, needs okay so if you start from the health sector you realize that um, we we have a lot of um, um, deficit in terms of health infrastructure uh, especially uh, chip compounds and so although you see the, there's a difference between establishing a chip compound and building a chip compound. You understand? In my first term of office, we established some chip compounds. So here we could even hire people's houses okay. and then we buy, I mean, uh, establishment. Yes, establishing. Uh, I mean, here too, there were, I mean, no, there were very, very few chip compounds in the system. Right. You understand? And so we started establishing the chip compounds in the communities. So you have the chip compounds, not necessarily government owning or the uh, health directorate owning the infrastructure. Right. So we can we can rent some infrastructure to start to with serve chip to, to serve as chip compounds. So we started we started with that. We bought Veronica buckets. We bought um, thermometers. We bought a lot of 
apparatus or if you like instruments or um, um, clinical equipment to start those chip compounds. So my second term of office, we are now putting up the chip compounds and then weighing centers. Because if you go to some parts of my constituency, people have to travel not less than five kilometers to be able to assess a chip compound or a weighing center. So we started building chip compounds. If you go to a community like Antobia, um, I, I have put up a chip compound, about five bedroom chip compound there. Is it working? Is it a section? We have just finished. Okay. There, but we had already established a chip compound there in a rented okay. Uh, okay. I mean, apartment. Okay. So they just moved from the rented apartment to the one we have built. Right. You understand? Right. So we have finished that one. And uh, there's another community called Shemeha. Shemeha. Yes, that's about 80% complete. Okay. All these infrastructure being built by the I mean, MPs I mean, uh, 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 um, um, funds. And then we have another one, chip compound at uh, a community we call um, Adekrum. We, have also, we are also putting up a chip compound there at the day room. Um, if you go to a community like uh, Yaojim, we have also put up a chip compound there. In some of these communities, what we do is that we do um, self-help projects. Because of the amount involved, you cannot give the project on contract or go through the process building and all that. It involves a lot. So sometimes what we do is that because we come from a rural area, Roots are not usually problems, and so you give the community the I mean, cement, sand, gravels, and then they also use communal labor to assist in putting up those structures. So, and then there are some chip compounds too. We have also renovated. We understand. There's a very interesting one at a place we call um, Sanyano. We, the district assembly started putting up a chip compound during the previous regime, okay? And so when we left office, I mean the NDC left office, they abandoned that particular facility. And then the community people came to me and said, look, you lobbied for the construction of this particular project. So if the assembly is not continuing the project, we expect you to continue the project. And I thought it made sense. And so I approached, and because it was not a project for the MP, we, I had to call on the assembly to give me the permission to go and then construct. But you know, as Ghanaians, we sometimes, I doubt if as politicians we are partners in development. <laughs> you understand? Because we, we are so much concerned about who takes the credit than the project itself. So I approached the DCE that this is the situation. If you don't have money, I'm prepared to use the MP share of the common fund to continue the project. And it took her two years and after now he has not even responded. So I went into the community and I said same to the chiefs that you can go to the DC because I need permission to continue. And that one also took them about two months without any response. I went to the community again and then the youth there must up. I said, look, honorable. If you have the items, bring us the items, and we are going to continue the project. We need a project. We are not ready to listen to any other excuses again. Of course, I gave them the items, and now I believe it's more than 97, 98% complete. So that's another controversial and interesting project that we are seeking to complete. There are other places, if you go to a place like Canton Krubo, their nurses quarters was also in a very deplorable state. I had to move in swiftly to renovate. And uh, there are others. And so that is basically um, what we are doing in the health sector. If you come to the health sector again, uh, before even there was anything like um, ambulance in this constituency, around 2000 and... Um, I think it will be around 2018, I used my share of the funds to buy an ambulance. And it's not a Hyundai or any other I mean, brand of vehicle. It was a Benz. Okay. And I used my share of the common fund to buy an ambulance for this district hospital. It cost me a lot of money, but I did it. You know. So these are some of the things we have done. And uh, since the outbreak of COVID-2, We've also been able to buy a lot of items for them. We went there. They didn't even have a holding center. 
uh, the ministry just, I mean, told them to open up a holding center by word of mouth. They didn't bring any resources. So they had to call on me. I had to give them some part of my funds to be able to put a, a holding center together and uh, um, bought them a lot of um, 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 equipment, thermometers, Veronica buckets, hand sanitizers, masks, a lot of them. So in the area of health, we've done our best. So, so upon, upon returning the constituency, uh, we came to a community by name Bonsun Kwanta and uh, we came across an abandoned um, ne uh, nurses' quarters. What is your take on that? Yeah, that's also another interesting project. Mm. And um, we started this project when we were in power. I mean, between 2000 and um, between 2000, around 2013, right. thereabout. So, as governance is expected to be continued, we thought, we thought that this government would have continued. But unfortunately, um, it's been there since 2016. And so nobody has bothered to continue. So I am I thinking about effort to, to get I mean leadership who are directly in charge of this to as it were get the work started. You see, we have a um, I do not want to use some ways, but unfortunately we have a very wicked government in place. The government is not interested in the welfare of the people. They are always thinking about how they can win the elections by all means. Is it because it's not presided over by a member of parliament who is from their constituency, yeah. sorry, their, uh, their political party? But you see, even if you begin to think that way, after all, you put up a candidate yeah. to contest the parliamentary seat. Hmm. And interestingly, it is a, I mean, DC who is their parliamentary candidate. And why should that form the basis of development? Everybody must enjoy the national cake. We must have our fair share of the national cake. We contribute so much to the... To the, to the I mean, we are, we are part of the backbone of the economy. Right. If we talk about the backbone of the economy, cocoa is a critical, I mean, pillar. And this area, this constituency, is one of the major producers of cocoa in this country. So, I don't see why projects should not be continued. It beats my imagination. It sometimes pains me. It beats my imagination. And you saw the state of it. I mean, you need less than 20, 30% to complete it fully. Get it started, true. You see? True. So I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. And so for me, uh, I am thinking about using the same strategy I use in Sayano, mm -hmm. where the community will call on me mm -hmm. and I'll give them the necessary assistance to fully complete it. And so, um, it's something. And meanwhile, the health professionals in that particular facility, I mean, are getting, they have issues and problems in accommodation. You know, the facility is a little distance away from, from yes. the main right. town. True. So, assuming there's an I mean, emergency, okay, that's a nurse will have to. Have to come all the way from exactly. All the way to the Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Worrying. And so it's a, it's a, it's a worrying situation. Right. But hey, that's what we find ourselves in. Like you made mention of health, I mean, education is also uh, one of the important sectors that plays a pivotal role in our economic setting and all of that. Now, let's look at education generally and um, what the MP's project, or what you have done as far as the MP's project is concerned in the educational sector as well. Yeah. Um uh, I went to Parliament around 2013. So when we came, as a rural constituency, we had challenges in the education. So the first thing I realized was that there were a lot of youth in the house who had gone to secondary school but couldn't get passes in all their subjects they pursued in the secondary school. So I put up what we call the MPs Remedial School. And so everybody, everybody could access to it. It was, we were running, we were running like, like a school. And so I was paying the teachers from my MP share of Common Fund and all that. We had a lot of uh, students who took advantage of, and now some of them are in the tertiary institutions and all that. And the district assembly then also had to put up a lot of classroom blocks, a lot of classroom blocks. We, we put up not less than, if I'm not exaggerating, we put up not less than 10 different 
whether it is three unit classroom or six unit classroom blocks, because this is a rural constituency and so it's scattered. So every community needs a kind of school, whether exactly. So we, started, we did a lot of such projects. We did a lot of, and then we also lobbied some from central government. So if you go to a place like Bonzai, they had, I mean, a, necess, a teacher's quarters plus a session classroom. If you, if you go to a place like um, Kwakrum, fantastic. So if you go to Africa, for example, there's a teacher's quarters and a session classroom block. Oh. You understand? You see the vision of the, the then president. True. You see, that's a visionary leader. True. Look at the community, where you were coming from. If you put up a session classroom, where will the teacher sleep? So we decided to put up a, and the state is, as you saw, it's been abandoned. It's as though I will go and sleep in that, or oh, his excellency John Dramani Mahama will go and sleep. So let's, let's leave it like that. Do you care about development in the constituency? No. You know, and so that is it. We, uh, if you go to a place like a uh, break room, you saw the state of the break room session in the classroom block. It's been left, it's been abandoned. You know, you go to a place like Dominable. The, 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 the children are now using the classrooms as we left it. It's not been completed, but they have no option. They have to use it like that. If you go to a place like a Tesso, same. It's not been completed. It's been abandoned, but they have no option than to use it in its current state. Sometimes I get worried. The reason why I get worried is this. We have an old... Um, classroom block that is in a deplorable state yeah. students are complaining bitterly about it i mean anytime it rains it get up i mean it affects them and all that now we have a new structure that has been that is almost mm -hmm. eight five next yeah. five co yeah. have been completed yeah. and it's just left with one or two touches to get it done so that we can move these students who are complaining bitterly to this classroom block and also have a good education yeah. but yet we just subject them to the old system the old structure so as we think as politicians, no, no, you see, as politicians, let's be frank here. We think that we are being smart. But you see, at the end of the day, if you throw a ball to a way, it bounces back to you. The, 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 the mafia in this whole thing is that, look, the previous regime started a project. If I complete it, I won't take the credit. So clearly, it's like our, our leaders don't think about the citizenry. They it's, don't think about the it's, for me, it's individual differences. But if you are a leader, okay, and you really care about the people, and sometimes you see, don't, don't think that the people are fools. They are not fools. Because when you complete the project and they are in dire need of the project, whether you started it or not, you also get, you get a fair share of the credit. You understand? Even if you don't get a credit, and then there's development, there's progress, at least. I mean, as a leader, you feel relieved. So, for me, I don't see... Look, no matter how you think about it, you will get any political capital out of it if you abandon it. Okay? Because if you abandon it, the, the right in opposition will use it against you. And it's a taxpayer's money as well. Of course. But you are thinking about the patriotic aspect of it. Right. Let's even go into, I mean, political, political idiosyncrasy. Right. Like, look... What, what is the advantage or the disadvantages in abandoning the project? I don't, I, don't, I don't see any sense in it. Because if you abandon the project, the, the one who started it politically will use it against you. And the people in the community will buy it. So what is the political advantage? What is the political capital advantage? In constituency, what we saw was this. The project that was started by the ex-government mm -hmm. had been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And there's a new project being done that obviously could serve as the same purpose that has been abandoned so that's another thing it doesn't make sense it doesn't you could have used that resources for a different project a different community for a different community or even for the same for the same community if, if a previous government has started unit classes unit classroom i don't think that the community have almost everything they need True. you understand so you can Put small resources in the already started one, complete it, and then if you have anything, you can do something different for them. You can start some water project, you can start some chip compound, you can start something, some market, and what have you, and take their credit. So we need to think like leaders who really care about the people. 
Sometimes I, I don't get it. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense when you do that. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So if you go to break room, you realize that it's been, ab sorry, it's been abandoned. And uh, uh, I've already mentioned the Tesla I've mentioned. You see, probably you may go to that site. We have only one government secondary school or senior high school in this constituency. Now the previous regime started the day school. You know, the 200 senior high school that uh, President Mahama promised. Promise. Is that why in this constituency? Go say it's been taken away, it's been taken over by the bush. Or oh, weeds all over. You all go the there. Weeds. Yes. Grass cutters and uh, <laughs> uh, rats and what have you have taken over. Can you imagine? You see, you go to some places, it's, it's, it's almost completed, but it's been abandoned. Meanwhile, we are running our schools like traffic lights. Yes. <laughs> Red green, red blue, whatever. They have blue color in their political, I mean, they are party colors, so probably they will add blue color very soon. <laughs> you know, we have all these colors we are running. Meanwhile, there are projects that we need very little to complete. Okay, so I, Honorable, uh, before we continue with our conversation, I just on standby with some comments from um, residents and constituents in the Duaboso constituency. So let's have a take of what I um, is talking about in the uh, with the people in the constituency. Hello, good evening. My name is Ivy Abnadejin Akita. This is Constituency Connect here on Pan African Television. Currently, we are inside Jaboso, in the Jaboso constituency of the Western North region of Ghana. And today, we are here to know the challenges of the constituents. We are also here to speak to Honorable Member of Parliament, Kwabna Mita Ankando, representing the National Democratic Congress. And we'll be speaking to him to know um, his vision for the people when elected into power once again. And also, what any attributes he comes on board with if elected into power. And we also we're going to speak to constituents and residents to know what they think of their Honorable Minta and Kando, the Member of Parliament, incumbent Member of Parliament for the Jaboso constituency. So we have one motor rider in um, Jaboso. Boss, let's say. Please, my name is Mur Sambo. Mur Sambo. Yes, madam. Yeah, I'm living here. So how long have you been doing this work? Please, this work I do it almost of six months now. Yeah. Do you know your member of parliament? Yeah, I know him. What's his name? His name is Kwame Minta Akando. Okay, so what do you think of him? Do you like him and you would want to give him another chance come December? Yes, we have to vote for him to come again because we get a lot of member of parliament. A uh, member of parliament like Honorable Mita Akando is a performing man who can help us with the youth of Jaboso. So, so far, what has he done that you think should be given the chance once again? Uh, a lot of things. He made classroom, building classrooms, uh, healthcare centers, and road construction. We see because between Monsoon Quanta and Proso. For most of eight years, the road was not, uh, was not completed. And now, of him, he forced them completed the road. Bonso area, a lot of challenges with healthcare center. He come, and that was his second term, he made the healthcare center for Bonso Gwanda people. Now, we are not fixing any problem over there. About what he did, is helping the farmers and uh, youth with the Gabosu people here. Because you see a lot. Do you think he should be elected once again? Yeah, we have to give him another four years again. Four more for? Kwamna Minta Akando and uh, His Excellency, our former president, John Dramani Mohama. His Thank you so much. Up. Thank you too. All right. So this one says he thinks um, Honorable Minta, Kwamna Minta Akando should be elected once again because since eight years, their roads weren't constructed. But ever since he came to power, he was able to lobby for the construction of their roads. Let's speak to one other person. What's your name? Oh, I'm Alfred Donko. Alfred Donko. Um, do you live here? Yeah. For how long? How long have you been living here? Well, I, I'm a native here. Okay, so you were born and 
Yes, please. Um, do you know a member of parliament? Uh, the name of the member of parliament is Honorable Kabrem Intakando. So I want us to talk, uh, I want you to speak in your native language. Um, do you think Honorable Minta and Kado should be given another chance to come into power? Well, uh, it should be given another chance because I think uh, the Honorable Member for Jaboso Constituency is performing. Uh, he's, uh, he's performing well. He's performing. So I think. Uh, we the citizens here, we need to, you know, uh, cast our vote in his favor so that he'll be able to continue with a good job he has been doing for us. When you say good jobs, can you list some? What has, what have you seen so far? Well, um, when we talk about education, he has done a lot. Uh, education aspect, not education alone. There are so many things. This Honorable Kabrami Takando has been doing for job also. And all these things favor both the individual and the constituency as a whole. First night, what do you do? Uh, right now, uh, I'm working. I'm working at a government hospital. Yeah. So that means personally you have benefited, right? Well, I'm benefited indeed. Um, tell your honorable something. What do you have to tell him? Well, the best, the only advice or what I can tell honorable Kabrem Intakando is that uh, we are all aware of what he is doing and we really appreciate. For that matter, we want him to continue how he started it. Uh, but there are more room for improvement. Okay. Oh, my name is Alfred Donko. Okay, so Alfred is telling Honorable Kwabna Minta and Kando that there are more room for improvements, but they have seen what he's doing, the good job he's doing for the constituency, and so he's going to be voted once again in order to continue on the good work done. So this has been Constituency Connect, and as I said earlier, we are inside Jaboso in the Jaboso constituency in the western north region of Ghana. Ivan is on standby with Honorable Kwabna Minta and Kando. So Ivan, take over. Thank you very much, Ivan, for that information. There, we are still in the Jaboso constituency, and we are in conversation with um, Honorable um, Kwabna Minta and Kando, who is the member of parliament for the Jaboso constituency. Welcome back, Honorable. Thank you. Now, Honorable, something caught my attention, and for me, I think it's extremely sad. What do you make of the Hilly Hilly uh, community? Uh -huh. Hilly Hilly. Hilly Hilly, yes. Hilly Hilly. We are very, very interested in this. Very, very hilly, interesting, hilly. trust me. Trust me. Uh, I, I guess you are talking about the real ratification. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have not less than, and I'm being very charitable, we have not less than 50 communities that um, there's an ongoing. A real ratification that has been abandoned. Until 53. That's what I'm saying that not less, not than, less than 50. Wow. Is it that right? for right of inception they have not seen electricity? Yes, we've never seen electricity before. And so we decided, look, if wow. if President Mohammed's government has stayed in power up to today, the Abuse constituency would have recorded 100 percent complete electricity. Mm. Yes. And you know, between 2012 to 2016, we connected not less than 60 communities to the national grid. Wow. Yes, we did. And we targeted not less than, I'm being very charitable, charitable very yeah. careful. I do not want to exaggerate anything. Not less than 50 communities were going to connect to the national grid. And, and then we lost power. We thought that they would have continued. Continue. The state is as you saw. And it is as we left it. Because we saw the electric cables just lying on the ground and the so and I, I think you've even not gone to some of the places. In some places, I mean, the cables have been stolen. It's as wow. sad as that. Extremely sad. Yeah. Extremely sad. That's face man. Going down the drain. Hmm. That's how sad it is. And we mount platforms and we talk as if we care so much about it. I'm, I'm short of words. Yeah, I'm <laughs> we have not less than yesterday. I went to one of the communities called Ajumum. The posts are the posts are being erected. No wires on top, nothing. 
and you ask them, and they, they, they fabricate some stories. I don't get it. Because the reason why I'm saying that I was sad was that, you know, surprisingly, we got to the Hilly Hilly um, um, community and we just stopped by to, to, to buy uh, some drinks and water. And I think one of my colleagues said, Patron, they said food you. And I was like, you need food you. I will come and decide by now. And I was shocked. I was shocked to the bone. When you start a project like that, you go to Hilly Hilly. You go to um, Chelsea Koko, you go to Ajumon, you go to Dodo Su, you go to Aboboya, you go to Sunyamiye, you go to um, a whole lot of communities. Wow. And so, what are they saying? What are the people saying? I, I know, I mean, they are crying for, for, for help from the government, but what are they also doing to, to, get, the, to get the whole thing done? What can they do? You go to parliament, you file a question, they come and tell the stories. Oh, we will come and do, we will come and continue the project. Yet, they don't come. Okay. You see, as members of parliament, one of your responsibilities is to draw government's attention to needs in your constituency. You can't go and draw a calculus and go and butcher any minister or the president. The worst you can do is to wait till the end of the four years and vote against the president. What else can you do? So, so let me pose this question. So earlier in our conversation, you made mention of the fact that some of these developmental projects, you used the MP's common yes, fund, yes, representation yes, of 4.5%. Yes, yes. I don't know if you're still accessing that common fund, yeah, but, yeah. but there are some was there a point you wanted to use the MP's no, common no, fund no, for? No, no, are, we have our limit. There are some projects that might necessarily come from central government. You can't use 4.5% of the common fund to go and construct a tide room. You can't use it for rare education. Mm. You can't use it for big, 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 big projects. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's not feasible. So I'm tempted, I'm tempted to ask, how much is the MP's common fund? How much? Uh, that's what I'm saying. It, it depends. Sometimes it comes um, uh, 60,000 Ghana cities. It oh. depends. Uh -huh. It's a percentage of a certain revenue. Okay. Uh -huh. So depending on that particular quarter, 60,000, mm. 70,000. So it ranges from 50 to 70,000. You see, the common fund comes quarterly, every quarter, every quarter. and it's almost all the time in areas. It okay. doesn't come regular. It's almost all the time in areas. And then we have what you call the GET fund and, and the National fund, Health yeah. Insurance. They also come once in a year. So the GET fund, for example, this year, I think we are assessing about 70,000 ganaches per year. Okay. Okay. And then, okay. I think um, the, um, the National Health Insurance too, we are assessing around 70,000 Ghana cities per year. year. Okay. You understand? So these are the money uh, I mean, mm. we are assessing to develop our rural mm. districts. Our needs are different. You know, you go to Bantaman, you go to uh, Adenta, you go to Nimben, you go to the city. And there's a member of parliament that we are assessing the same amount of money. They don't need this new classroom block there. Yeah, they have it. They have, they, they have it. But we are assessing the same amount of money. And I'm using money to construct schools. And they're using this for? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm here to talk for myself. I, I, I agree to that. I understand. Yeah. I agree to that. And so, that, that, that is. Um, how some of us in the rural communities mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. suffering. No, so, so 7 December is just around the corner. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 7 December is around the corner. We're going to have our parliamentary elections and, of course, our, our general elections. Now, what I'm telling you people, uh, with regards to the rural education, you know, hele hele, not have access, access to light, you know, they are watching. I'm right. like, telling them. Yesterday, I, 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 was, I was just, I, I came, I, I went to one of the communities and I told them, the best I can tell them is that when my party, comes back to power, the NDC. When his essence is under many Mahama becomes the president of the Republic of Ghana again, we will make sure that that those communities will be connected. Is there a promise for the first year? Well or you can't ascertain whether or not well, it's going to be done in the first year. Well, I do not want to place timelines, but it will be done the four years. It must be done. Mm. It must be done. It must be done. And I'm not, a, I'm not a type, I'm not the type who likes giving promises in campaigns. I don't do that. You know, and my people know me for that. I deliver. I prefer to send 
the project without even promising than to promise and uh, 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 not deliver. Right. Yes, so we will, by God's grace, mm. when we come back to power, mm. we will connect all those communities mm. to the national grid. Okay. So we're going to talk about agriculture, but before we do that, let me just chip in um, the aspect of roads. Now, before the roads, before we okay. get up to roads, there's mm. another huge, huge, but uh, I doubt if there is any member of parliament who uh, has used his share of the common fund. Accomplishing. There's such a huge project. You go to Jabutu Senior High School, and I, I pray that you go past there. We will do that. We do that. A very big hall, and mm. that building has been put up by the MPs. How how big is that? Is that? Because I, I, it pretty much looks like you're confident in telling me that. Because you go, cameras will not lie, mm. and I think that building can take not less than three thousand students. Wow! As I speak to you now. Mm. And I've struggled to put up wow. that particular. I've really struggled to put up that particular structure. I'm sure I'm they are very, so very grateful that. to you I'm for so that. So proud, so proud of that project. And you go there and you see the project. We'll, 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 we'll make sure we go there and have a view of yeah. what because I can see how you are explaining and how excited you are about this project. We'll do that. We'll do that. So come on, let's let's move to roads. Uh, personally, um, I'm a living testimony to to the roads. Uh, I, I think some are well constructed, some aspects too are uh, in a deplorable state. I mean, uh, I'm a living testimony. Now, when we spoke to some persons, I mean, um, I mean, I mean, some residents and constituents around, and they made mention of the fact that usually when it's time for elections, I mean, leadership from most of the political parties come, and uh, one of their key messages or campaign messages they put out is uh, when we come we we'll make sure that your roads are well constructed uh, we're going to ask for it and all that but i don't really we give them the power we give them the nod and it still remains as it is what, what, what do you have to say about that we in the ndc promise and we deliver hmm. we don't make mockery of our electorate if you come to my constituency when his excellency um, former President John Jordan Jordan Mahama. Mahama was the President of the Republic of Ghana. If you come to Jaboso constituency, from Jaboso, the road that was link that is linking Jaboso to Bodhi was dusty. It was dusty, right. As I speak to you now, it's been tied. Mm. And it was tied by His Excellency John Jordan Jordan Mahama. Mahama's government. Okay. That particular four years. From Jaboso through Antobia to Amoya, linking that there so was also dusty. As I speak to you now, it's been done. It was done by His Excellency John Drummond in Mahama. There were portions in between um, um, Nkwanta to mm. Bonsu Nkwanta. Okay. I mean, around Adekum, that area had also not been, I mean, tired. Tired, yeah. We did it before we left power. The Hele Hele Road you see, mm. we constructed that road Okay. Before we left power, yeah. the, there is another major road from Bentima Junction to Osekwe. It's an international road. It links Ghana to La Côte d'Ivoire. Okay. We started that project. We gave it on contract. We did all the drainings, and it was a major campaign message against us. They came. They left it. Last year, uh, the vice president came here to cut the sword. They left it, and they have just come back to site. And the strategy is to be on the road till we finish mm. December 17th elections. And we know about that. So when it, when it talk about road, as far as Jaboso is concerned, we are very strategic. Okay? So we're pushing for all our roads to be tapped. But unfortunately, you left power. Left power. Mm. It's not Jaboso alone. There were a lot of roads in this enclave that were constructed. Right. Mm. So we did our best. There's no way you do all right. projects mm. within a matter of, mm. I mean, even four years or eight years. Mm. But you must demonstrate to the people that you really care about them mm. and you have the development of the area at heart. But you don't sit somewhere till the final year and you pretend as though you are doing some development. And of course, the expectation that upon vacating office and the uh, new government coming to power, they would also take on the work that you have done and also finish up with um, some other roads that were not uh, um, I, I mean
child and all that, but it's been left like it's that. Been left like that. It's well. been left like that. It's been left like that. Hmm. It's, it's, it's rather unfortunate, but uh, their performance is quite a busy. And uh, you, can, you can ask the electorate or the people in the constituency yourself. Hmm. Because they, they, they spoke so much. They spoke about a lot of things, making sure the youth in the constituency will get access to jobs, making sure they will get um, various chemicals for their farms, making sure they will tie all their rules for them, making sure almost every community, every village will have portable drinking water, making sure they spoke a lot. But very, very little, if any, has been done. All right. Well, I mean, it's sad, though, but what can we do? We're just hoping that uh, the right things have been done by, uh, I mean, government and leadership and all that. Let's move straight to agriculture. I know agriculture is also one of the major backbones of, um, I mean, our economy, um, specifically cocoa production. And uh, like you intimated earlier on about, um, if not mistaken, about 65, 70, 75% of persons here in this constituency, Drabuso constituency, are largely noted for farming. And uh, obviously in cocoa production and all that. Now, what what have you done differently to to? I mean, we know that most of the time persons in farming do not have a specific standard of living. Now, what have you done differently to alleviate their concerns from where it used to be to a to a, to a higher you know standard or to a higher level? Now it's going worse. You, you, you can't even talk about maintaining the standard let alone increasing the standard. Hmm. No. How worse has it been? You know, hmm, the, the standard of living is hinged on the, what we call pro, producer price of the cocoa. Right. It's the money the person gets out of the cocoa hmm. okay, that the people live on. Okay? And so, for example, if one bag of cocoa the farmer sells can buy some amount of or some number of cement, hmm. some number of packets of roofing sheets, okay, can buy some number of i mean some number of liters of fuel so the purchasing power of the money per one bag of yeah. cocoa yeah. is what the person lives on right okay right now if for example one bag of cocoa could buy about say 20 25 bags of cement now it cannot buy even 10 bags of cement that's how worse it is been. exactly wow so the purchasing power of the money itself it's not a right over has devaluated has devaluated now quite apart from that you realize that when his excellency the uh, president um mills or president kofo or president mahama was in power was in power we saw a consistent increase in the producer price almost hmm. every year every year at that yeah. point in time during professor Mills's time we saw hmm. the increment i think they increased about two or three times within one year true but for the past four years, mm. they've not increased more than two times. So not even two times. Not more than two times. And I mean, they could increase it like 40 gamma cents. So the increment in the producer price has also not been anything to write home about. Quite apart from that, you see, even if you're not getting increase in your price, and you have a larger quantity of cocoa per hectare mm. per the size of your farm the yield is increasing true. at least that can give you more money more money that's true that's true very that's good. true that's true and that also depends on how well you can treat the cocoa how you be able to get fertilizer to apply true. on your farm true. that will increase the production and the yield right the yield right. of cocoa now, during his excellency John Dramani Mohammed's time, he was giving the farmers free cocoa fertilizer to increase their yield. The interesting aspect is that when the MPP took over, the first year, 2017, the fertilizer the former regime bought to be distributed to farmers free of charge, they rather sold those farmers. Wow. I heard about that. I thought there was no idea of truth in no, it. No, it's, it's a fact. So you, those days, you could see a fertilizer that has been embossed with the fertilizer, strictly not for sale. Yes. But they will be selling them. You understand? So because farmers, you see, in this part of the country, at the point in time, 
it becomes very difficult for farmers to come by money. Even 50 Ghana cities. Very true. Very, very difficult. You understand? So because the farmers do not have money, they don't have money to buy the fertilizer. They don't get money. access to fertilizer. And therefore, their farms have been denied of fertilizer application, which will Especially affect the production of cocoa. Mm. So no wonder we are seeing a decline in tonnage of cocoa in this country. Mm. Mm. You've explained it very well for us. And so, and so it's affecting the backbone of the economy in, in general. So mm. part of the hardship is also because of the decline in production of cocoa. Because cocoa is said that even if you're a cocoa farmer, when there is a syndicated loan in the system, it affects our economy. The economy does so well. That's why we have a lot of foreign exchange in the system. And then our currency is able to um, um, stand on stand its feet. feet. You understand? And so it affects, quite apart from the fertilizer application, there are some chemicals mm. that we use to prevent the cocoa being attacked by diseases. You understand? So you could, you could go to the farm, you see that you have a lot of cocoa pot on a particular tree, but all the pots have been attacked by cocoa disease. And so you, you end up plucking every cocoa and throwing it away. You know? So if you get those chemicals to spray your cocoa farm or cocoa trees, it prevents it from cocoa being, I mean, the cocoa being attacked by disease. By, 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 by diseases and pests. And so you end up getting more yield. Now, as I speak to you now, those chemicals, during his excellency John Dramani Mohammed's era, they were giving it free of charge to every cocoa farmer. Plus the fertilizer. The, plus the fertilizer. And they were taking those chemicals to the communities. People will line up at broad daylight, you mention your name, you come for your chemicals, and you go and use it to spray your farm. As I speak to you now, if you are not a member of the new patriotic party, it's exceedingly difficult for you to get access to these chemicals. That's a, that's a statement of fact. Wow. <laughs> if you're not a member of the new patriotic party, it's exceedingly difficult, difficult to get to access, access to those chemicals. That those chemicals have been bought by the cocoa farmers' money. Has been politicized. Hmm. I heard about it. I, I mean, like I, told, I was telling you earlier on, I didn't well, know. To quote one of the farmers, I went into a community and they told me, Honorable, these days these chemicals are being shared at a cemetery. So yes. are so, like, how, like, saying, you see, the cemeteries, you get to the cemeteries before you get to their villages, normally. And so when they go and take the chemicals, okay, they meet them at the outskirts of the town, distribute the chemicals before they get into the communities. <laughs> that is what is happening on the ground. On the ground. You, can, you, can, you can get CR colleagues to defend and do it. You can go to the constituencies, communities and ask them, and they'll tell you all the stories. Wow. So, to tell you the truth, people are very angry. That is how they, they registered the way they did. Mm. Very, very angry. Mm. Very, very angry. Okay. Almost oh. everything in this country has been politicized. If you are not a member of the... You see, you go to some communities and one person will be doing like three or four different jobs whilst there will be other i mean hundreds if not thousands of other people without any job mm. this is what is going on on the ground extremely sad so the people are really 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 angry really angry and looking at how they were promised before these people came into power I can assure you, the people will really prove that the power resides in them. Right. Thank you very much, Honorable. Before I leave you, before I leave you, I mean, I know um, election is just about three, four months away. And uh, what is the campaign message you have for your people? I mean, I know your opposition is also not sleeping. Uh, they're also coming at you. Uh, what, is, what are some of the campaign messages that you are putting out for your people in the Jabosu constituency? Well, in Jabosu constituency, we are part of the country. And so every development that goes on any part of the country also affects us. Mm. And so um, um, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has promised the good people of this country that 
we are going to get free primary health care. Mm. We are very happy and we are trumpeting it very, very, very loudly in this constituency and the people are happy mm. about that. Mm. Uh, we are telling the people that when His Excellency the President comes back, President Mahama comes back, we are going to handle the cocoa sector very well. As I speak to you now, most of the cocoa trees are dead. So a lot of the people, a lot of the farmers, caretaker farmers, have relocated. And so we we'll put pragmatic steps in place to revive the cocoa industry. They will see consecutive increase in cocoa prices and um, the cocoa sector will come back mm. to life. Uh, we are not going to discriminate. We are going to continue with the rural development. We are going to continue with the rural electrification. We are going to continue to give the people uh, portable drinking water. We are going to continue to build schools. We are going to continue to build chip compounds. We are going to continue to build health centers. We are mm. going to continue to build hospitals. We are going to continue to build roads. We are going to continue mm. to construct critical roads, mm. especially leading to their, I mean, farm gates or their communities and what have you. So the real development, they are really going to see those real development. One thing that His Excellency the President Mahama, President Mahama has said is that he is going to, I mean, wage a vigorous campaign against unemployment. Mm. A vigorous campaign against unemployment. And he is talking about sustainable jobs. It's not, it's not a type of job that you do for two years and then you leave without knowing where you are going. Mm. And so, are you talking about that? Oh, yeah, but you know. I mean, after two years, well, you don't know where you'll be going. But they call it jobs. <laughs> you, they call those, those type of jobs two jobs. You understand? But his essentially the president is talking about sustainable jobs. So if there's the need, you see a visionary leader thinking about how to expand infrastructure and health. When the infrastructure in health is expanded, you think about taking more health professionals. Mm. You understand? So if there are, let's say, 2,000 health professionals in the system and you increase the bed capacity, you are going to increase the number of health professionals mm. who are in the system. And this is sustainable right. job. It's not my right. And that is what he's talking about. If you go by building more schools, for example, communities where there are no schools, you put up more schools. What it means is that you'll be employing more teachers, and that is what we call sustainable jobs. Yes. It's not narco. Okay? And so his excellency the president is going to is going to look at the agri sector to also uh, I mean create a lot of jobs. Where it is not about planting for food, what doesn't exist as you walk by, ask people what is planting for food, and then I'll show you the practical or the demonstration of, of planting for food in this my constituency. And I'm challenging you, if you see 10, I will resign as a member of parliament in this constituency. 10, this is the practical demonstration of planting for food in the constituency that we are assisting people, this is what we are doing. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on your televisions and your, your radio stations. But what is SLAC the president President Mahama is talking about is that look, when we come, we are going to talk about preparing lands. It is about rice cultivation. We prepare the land, we irrigate the land, and then we share and we demarcate the lands among the youth, give them input, go into farming. Right. We put systems in place. They spoke about irrigation when it comes to even the northern part of the country. Have you forgotten one, vill uh, one village, one dam? Yeah, one village, one dam. The purpose of the construction of those dams is to irrigate land in order for the people in the northern part of the country to have all year round farming. That was the purpose. Not to create a stagnant water for cattle to drink. Mm. That was not the purpose. In fact, when it comes to drinking of water, what His Excellency, uh, the, the present day the Vice President, promised the good people of this country is that when Nanado becomes President, in a matter of two years, every village in this country will have portable drinking water. So today, if they don't feel ashamed to tell us that they are freaking stagnant water and people are fetching those water to their households, it's a shame. Right.
You understand? Right. As I speak to you now, there isn't any single dam in this country that ha that was commenced by MPP completed, and that dam has irrigated some piece of land, and that particular area is being cultivated all year round. Not a single one. I challenge them. I am a farmer, and I farm in the northern part of the. Oh, country. you are a farmer. I'm a very big farmer. Oh. I don't think there are more than ten farmers in this country who plant rice more than me. Wow. Yes, from planting to processing. Oh, that sounds good. From That's planting good. to processing. I'm into serious commercial rice farming. Oh, so I know what I'm talking about. Right. I, I plant in the northern part of the country and I plant here. I'm into cocoa farming too. So I am a, I am a, I'm a farmer. That's nice. Thank you very much, Honorable. Most Thank you for your time uh, and for, for allowing us into your homes. Right. So we have been in conversation with uh, Honorable Kwabena Minta Akando, who is the uh, pal uh, member of parliament for the Jaboso constituency and also the ranking member of health in um, health, health committee uh, uh, in parliament. So this is where we wrap up the show on Constituency Connect. My name is Ivan Banz and we've been, uh, we've been coming to you um, from the Jaboso constituency. Uh, we'll come away some time next week. It's bye for now. around the small money that they are, we are getting as a country from mining of uh, gold to now transfer to the uh, uh, London Stock Exchange mm. for others to now come and invest in just because we want to excite ourselves that we are the first to create this investment fund in Africa. If we want to be the first to create wh whatever fund in Africa and be seen as the first, why don't you go about it the right way? Because right now, Everywhere I hear this Ejapat deal,